Hi, welcome to the Whitey White Guys Show. I'm Whitey. Let me pull you in closer so we can make out. Uh, I just got done kind of muscling through Blade 2. Uh, Wesley Snipes is in this. Chris Christopherson. Ron Perlman. A um, couple other recognizable faces, but not a lot. That I, you know, people that I know. Um, Blade 2, uh, I just watched the first one, call it yesterday, last night-ish. Uh, for the first time, and like I said, they're, they're the first Blade. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. Um, it, I, it was a little better than I expected. There was a little more depth of story. Uh, the clips that I'd seen, and you know, I'd be at a buddy's house and be watching a second a section of it, and there was a lot of just, you know, one man wrecking the machine. Blade's a hot knife who goes through butter, and here's a bunch of bullshit for why he can slash people up and look cool. Um, and I got to give it credit. That there was more story there. There was more going on with the villains than a typical movie like this, and I, I appreciated that. You know, there was the the new school of uh, vampire is going after the old school of vampire, and there's intrigue and there's deception, um, and I thought that was pretty cool. I like the fact that the, there's the hero stuff is pretty much you'd expect, but there's more going on with the villain stuff, and it makes for a more interesting story. But the bad guys are so damn predictable. Um, there's no curveballs in these movies. You're getting what you know is coming. Blade 2 is the same same way. Um, you know, at the end of the first Blade movie, Chris Christopherson plays the old man. It's implied that he, uh, he dies. And then he's back! <laughs> After about a, a long extended fight scene. There's similar beats. So... Um, but he, they, he, Blade saves him. He's back, and then he's made human again. And they, you know, you knew that was coming just because you saw him in the, in the sequels, and you saw him in the trailer and stuff like. Well, he's clearly in the second one. He's coming back, stuff like that. Uh, here again, similar beats. But what's happening is that you have the vampires that they form a truce with Blade. Because there are werewolf vampire hybrid things going on. Whatever that kind of background is. You'll see him in a second. Uh, that guy, Nomak. Um, he's a new generation of vampire or something. And then with their, the way that <clears throat> when they bite you, you become one of them. Even vampires. Not just humans, but vampires. So they, the vampires and the in Blade and his crew, his crew, um, which is just Chris Christopherson, and then they, they got a new young guy. I've seen him in other other movies, but um, it's a very the new young guy who's on Blade's team, his trio. You know, he's a bad guy from his first piece of dialogue. Even if you know nothing about the movies, like he's a bad guy. And then so they have a blood sport, blood team that have been training for two years to take out Blade. But now with this new threat, they're there to take out the new threat and work with Blade. And so you have a, about a half dozen people with different weapons and different aesthetic. And, you know, some are tall, some are short. Um, and then Ron Perlman's there. And within 10 seconds, you're like, and he's a bad guy. So right, you know who the good guys and bad guys are. Right, but there's no surprises in this movie. Um, the kind of one a curveball, call it an atypical approach, is the Nomak character, who's the um, the new generation of vampire, and uh, he's he's been wronged by his father, who's the OG. So you have that theme again: the new generation versus the old generation, and the old generation is. Um, Curse the old white dudes who are up to no good. And then the new generation is like, I don't want to be bound by you. I don't, you know, I don't want to be subject to your rule. And so there is a little bit of interesting dynamic there. So you have Blade and his, his Chris Christopherson and the new guy. And then they're working with the vampires and their, the blood team that has formed. I forget what exactly it's called. They're you know, they're being double-crossed by the old guard, by Nomak's father, Blomack or something. Um, and so I thought that was interesting. I, I thought some of this, the, you know, if you've seen Blade, you've also seen Blade 2. Did you know that? It's the same movie. 
Wesley Snipes is too cool for school, and he goes hot knifing through butter through all the villains. Um, you know, there's interesting set design. It's well directed, just like the first one. It's not a bad movie. It's just you know what's coming. The moment of characters, the moment you set eyes on that character, go bad guy, good guy, sympathetic character, and uh, so the, it it ruins the tension. But still, there's a there's a commendable amount of story to the story, and a lot of these, you know, the good guy, you know, just slices and dices his way through the bad guys. There's usually not a lot of story to it. There's not a, a lot of there's not a lot of character development here either. The characters are pretty thin. There's a little more there, um, but it's the the different sides, you know, who's on what side, and that you know, there's the double crosses and all this stuff. Ron Perlman, you know, the bummy lays eyes on him is like, it's a double cross, and Ron Perlman's behind it, and the young young new guy, he's with him, and that's what happens. Um, but the Nomad character and his father and his sister, they give more weight to the villains, in this case, the vampires. Um, and that's commendable. I like that. I like that aspect of the story. Uh, it's well directed. The, the one qualm I had in the last one, you see the effects there. Um, when these films were coming out, when the first Blade came out, I want to say it came out in the late 90s, and computer graphics just weren't there. CG and CGI. It was in a infancy stage. It wasn't very good. This is a few years later, and so the technology has been updated, and or they went and got a better team, you know, because the first one was successful. They got a better special effects team, and you can tell. Um, you know, the effects on this sell a lot better. By today's standards, it's still clumpy in spots. Uh, I would say clunky in spots, but by and large, much better effects. Um, you know, that's not big to me, but... It, the effects, I like the story, I like the actors, but it does help. It's smoother because you can buy that that should just happen. And the first one is like, ooh, ah, is that how they took out the main band? Oh, that looked bad. Here it's like, hey, that looks smooth. It was good. That did, It didn't affect you in your viewing of the story at all. So, you know, still not awesome, but smooth. It didn't interrupt the story at all. So good for them there. Um... Yeah, see, like, that stuff there, you know, I could buy that. That was cool. Fair enough. And then you can get on with the story. So it, um, by the way, if you can't see this, Blade 2 back there. <laughs> and Star Fox and Nintendo 64 back here. Cool game. So uh, all in all, it's the same as the first one. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Um, Wesley Snipes, he's stuck in this spot where he's got to be stoic. And to a large degree, emotionless and show no weakness and all that stuff. It doesn't give him a lot of room to maneuver as an actor. Um, and so the future medic moments he's supposed to have, I just wasn't. He doesn't emote <laughs> enough emotion. So, it, it, but to his defense, he, he's doing what the director told him to do. This is who Blade is. He's that guy. He's got the shades. He's got the look. He's not supposed to be crying and bawling. But you got to have presence underneath the surface to make that character really work. And he didn't hit a home run here. Um, wasn't a He did his job. He did the job he was paid to do. He did. But one of the weaknesses in this movie is the team that he's supposed to be working with, the vampires with Ron Perlman and his crew. His crew! Um, they were weak sauce. And they, by and large, just got taken out. Bickety, bickety, bam. I mean, the first guy, Priest, goes down right away. The other guy gets bit. You know, and they, so, they introduce his crew, and you think, they're going to be pretty badass, um, but they're, they're there to be taken out one at a time. And that's exactly what happens. I thought they lacked on the badassery. And the one guy, Chupa or something, the white dude who's got, like, the machine gun, he's a bit more muscular guy with the machine gun. That was the one guy who was, like, I was kind of rooting for him. You know he's not going to be a good guy. And while he didn't turn on his team... He went after Whistler, like he had a grudge. Uh, he had a grudge against Blade, and it's like, that makes sense. He has been enemies for years, and you're suddenly supposed to be buddies. <laughs> so it made sense that he would do that, and I'm glad that you know he didn't uh, turn on his own guys. There was no disloyalty there. It's just an asshole. But uh, an understandably asshole. I wish he would have gone down more harsh. That's my one qualm. Like, I, they... 
they were there to be taken out one at a time. And it's like, give them a little something. Give them a moment, a few moments to be a little more badass uh, and go down in an epic way, something. And they really didn't. They really didn't. They were, you know, they've been training for two years to take you out to bleed. And then they go out like a piece of paper. It's like, they, or they fold like a piece of paper. It's like, really? The way they set that up, you know, they were supposed to be pretty badass. And they, they weren't, like, at all. Um... So, but what, ha what you know, and again, you got to have a bordering on a love interest character. And so the head vampire's daughter is like, oh, Blade, Arrow. But one of the problems with this film is they don't develop. There's a lot of action scenes. There's got to be. It's Blade. It's Blade 2. But they didn't really develop that too well. It was a bit there. They didn't do the worst with it. But he feels a little sympathy Perhaps boarding on a dash of romance with this girl, who's the again the main vampire's daughter, um, and that that worked pretty well. I thought they got most out, more out of that than the other stuff that was going on. Ron Perlman was a bad guy, but he was cool as hell as a bad guy. Um, the other guy was a bit of a douche, the young hipster dude, but he did his job. You know, he was the character he was supposed to be, so the actor came through on that um, all the time. He's like, "Yo, B, yo, B." And it's like, dude, you were so good at turning on this guy. And he ended up dead. Uh, Chris Christopherson has plot armor the size of Nebraska. Uh, there's no taking him out. So if Blade likes you, if you're Chris Chris, if you're the old old man, you're solid. Everybody else is true. So, and that's what happened. Everybody but Blade and Chris Christopherson die. Um, the Nomad character, I think, was the ace in the, in the, in the hand. I thought that character added the most... He had the most, you both hated him, but kind of saw where he was coming from. Like he wasn't, he didn't, he wasn't born of this. He was made this way. And that's the double cross spoilers. It's not a movie that you need to announce spoilers for because you know it's coming when it's coming. Um, but you're initially told that this is like an evolution. It was an accident. It was a something and the vampires need to stop. But then the head vampire turns out. He's trying to get rid of the evolutionary weaknesses of vampires. And so he's trying to create the next generation of vampires that are immune to silver and even ultimately sunlight. And Nomad was born of that process. It's not something he chose um, or wants necessarily. And he's trying to fight back against that. So while he's still a villain character, you're like, man, I can see where you're coming from, though, dude. Look at the situation you're in. Um... And at the end, he kind of takes himself out because he's sick of dealing with it. And I thought, well, that's that's some juice there. That's some writing there. Some good character, and the actor did a good job. This guy's the young guy douchebag. Um, again, not even funny. You know he's going to turn immediately. You know he's going to be end up with the bad guys. There's no, there's no. They didn't even try to hide that one. Um, so yeah, the. The pros are, with these movies, is often the case, if they're any good, it's the villains. The villains are more intriguing. The, the task force team turned out to be weak sauce. But the Nomad character is really the one thing that holds this movie slightly above um, the surface, slightly above Midland. Uh, I thought the actor did a good job. I thought the character was intriguing. He's hardly in the film. Uh, but when he's there, it's like, again, you know, I don't like what you are. But you were born. You didn't choose this. You know, it was forced upon you. You were put into this position by things outside of your control. And you're just trying to escape your, your doom, your fate of being this thing. That's understandable. So, yeah. Blade 2. Blade 1 and 2. Uh, to uh, the same. I'll put them in the, they're in the same regard. I didn't hate these movies. I didn't really care for them. Um, I wouldn't have watched them if, it wasn't, if I wasn't reviewing them. But they're better than I thought. I really thought this is going to be dog crap. Poor writing. You know, the acting, you know, you know, Ron Perlman's always good at what he does. You know that's going to be there. But Wesley Snipes is... There needs to be more bubbling under the surface with this character. And there's, there's, when you go to grab it, there's nothing there. So he does what he's supposed to do to be Blade. But for this to be a better film, he needed to pull more off and he didn't. Um, but still, 
they're um, for me it's like a C minus where I thought it was going to be a D or an F. You know, and with the Nomac, I'll give it a C, just a C. They're not awful. They're not good. They're not great. But uh, they're not as bad as I thought they'd be. So good for you, movies. Good for you. Blade 1 and 2. This time Blade 2. It's the same movie. It's the same thing. Um, yeah, so if you've never seen them before, I just told you everything that happens. But it doesn't matter because the plot is there to hang the action scenes on. With a little story and characters there, it's also Blade can kick some serious ass. And you're going to get what you want. So, if that's if that's your film, you're going to get what you want. All these Blade movies, credit what credits do. So, this is Whitey White Guys Show. I'm Whitey. If you're still here, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Watch the other videos if you didn't see the other Blade review. Um, and I'm working on... Just, just give you a moment. I'm working on this. So, I've got my Xbox 360 set up to this flat screen here. And here's the Xbox 360 down here. And this is the games that are coming through my HD60 Elgato. And then over here is going to be my AV stuff. So you see the tower of Nintendo and Super Nintendo PS2. That's going to go into that TV. And whilst I'm cleaning up the room and behind you, like I cleaned up the, I moved the bed around and kind of get my game center more set up. And I'll be doing more movie reviews like this. So since 2014, I'm like, more movie reviews are on the way. And they finally are. And more gameplay and stuff. So uh, you're watching the videos. I got live stream stuff. If you go on the channel, check that out. Uh, me playing video games and um, movie reviews. And that's what we do here at What Do I Show. So like, subscribe, check out the other stuff. I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.